Thank you, Zahra. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Morning Baraka, our health and nutrition segment. And with me today is Sana. Assalamu alaikum, Sana. Alaikum salam. How are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm very good, thank you. I'm really looking forward to what you have for us today. I know, another treat. Another <laughs> treat. So tell me, what have you got for us today now in your new recipe? So today we're going to be talking you through how to make a traditional Moroccan soup. Uh, it's called Harira. I have heard of it and I have tried it and yeah. I love it. <laughs> yes, it's lovely. It's full of so many things. and As I can see, all these ingredients displayed. Yes, exactly. So it will have lentils, chickpeas, uh, vermicelli, parsley and coriander, celery, tomatoes, garlic and onions. Very, very nutritional. Yes. Very, very nutritious. And all these ingredients are quite healthy, filling and soups can be used in so many ways exactly it's yeah. good even if you want to diet they say that you have like soup meals because mm -hmm. you have all the nutritions in there but you have it in the soup form exactly and you won't realize and all the different ingredients mixed give it such an exquisite taste and blend so I'm really excited as to what you have for us and let us you know yes hear okay, you talk look. you through this so um, first of all um, I will chop one onion so you, it depends if you want to have it into big slices or small slices it depends on how it's you kind prefer. of like a stew so um, I mean like soup but you know with soups you can either have it with big chunky vegetables or with you know really blended so with exactly. this traditional harira how do you describe it like so um, I would say that it's kind of medium blend okay. between it it's not very chunky and it's not uh, completely blended right and uh, depending on who makes it people have different ways of kind sure. of cutting and putting sure. things in there um, so mine would be around about kind of a medium like uh, kind of um, soup and so um, you will be able to taste the crunchiness of certain things in there sure. and um, it wouldn't be too thick hopefully so, so let's yep. just go through some of the ingredients that you're using. I know chickpeas, mm -hmm. it really improves your digestion. Yep. It's actually a really good substitute for meat as well. And it's very high in protein <coughs> and fiber. And you can actually use it to increase your appetite without having to increase your actual meal intake. Exactly. Because of the ingredients, it fills you up. Yep. So you can actually have the soup because normally soup doesn't really fill me up and I need a meal as well. Yes. But something like this, and especially with these sort of ingredients, it could be so filling. So, and you can actually use bread alongside it, or, exactly, yeah. which is what you would traditionally use anyways. Yes. Um, in fact, um, in Morocco, we would traditionally use something called um, simnan, which is like a flat pancake right. bread. bread yeah. um, Do you make that or buy that? Uh, I make it at home because I've learned through like family mm -hmm. uh, recipes. Um, I think you can buy it, but um, it's not around it's not very easy to find right um, but you can have a look online it's really really simple to make it right. it's not difficult yeah of course and um, but like you said you can have it with any bread like fresh bread baguette baguettes um, and you're using onion right now as well yes so I'm gonna chop some onion and garlic and also Imam Sadiq salam, has narrated that using onion will um, soften the outer skin it overcomes tiredness and strengthens the nerves and treats fever. Oh. So we do use that in a lot of our foods generally, but we don't so realize kind of the enough. benefits. Exactly. And there's so many things that we can use that can benefit us. If we are aware, we can be, make it more towards our meals and daily plans. And a lot of times we might even think, oh, you know, it doesn't really matter to have that ingredient. But all these little things are so vital. Exactly. Even lentils. Lentil soup, as Imam Sadiq has also narrated, that the soup stops the thirst and strengthens the, the stomach and it cures up to 70 types of ailments, yep. which is so amazing. Mm -hmm. And we do have that a lot in Ramadan as well, but you know what, we can actually use that throughout the, the year with something like this. Exactly. So I love soup generally, so I'm really looking forward to it, how you're going to you know, put this all together. I know, yeah. I mean, with the lentils, like you said, and I mean, when I was younger, they always said to have it if you're anemic. Okay, um, yes, and, it builds uh, that strength, yeah. It, it builds it and yeah, it's Yeah, it gives you strength, exactly. It gives you the strength. Exactly. So also what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop um, half of a celery stick. Obviously the portion we're making isn't, it, it's just enough for kind of a bowl. A bowl. One bowl. Yeah. Just for me. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, when, when you want to kind of um, do it at home, you may just have to of double. Of course, the ingredients, yeah. yeah. Okay, I like celery. I know not everyone is keen because it is an acquired taste. Yeah. But I think like, you know, putting in a soup like this, um, I do like it. I know some people even use it in the stews in the marak, you know, yes. the Iraqis normally do as well. Yes, they so, do. So um, I'm quite used to having it in that. 
but I can actually eat it on its own. I think it's quite very healthy. It's very, very, um, it's got a lot of water in it as well, which is what we need. If you're not used to drinking lots of water, then these sort of ingredients sort of helps. Exactly, and you can have it even if you don't fancy on its own with some hummus. I was just going to say, I love yeah. it with hummus. It's exactly. really tasty. Yeah, which is chickpeas again. Exactly, <laughs> yes. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just do the same with the tomato. Okay. Not everybody likes tomatoes, and even, you know, I mean, when you're going to be doing the soup, to be fair, it's, it's um, tomatoes are not necessarily used unless it's for that specific tomato soup because, you know, the colour is of the other natural ingredients. Yes, exactly. So this sort of makes it a little bit different having that in there because it's more like a, a stew exactly. than a soup. Yes, exactly. But what you would find is because we're going to, it will be simmering for quite a long time okay. and it will kind of uh, mush and um, become all like part of the soup. It okay, will become fine. liquidy. Um, now there are different ways of doing this. I know some people will actually um, grate the tomato okay. inside of inside of the soup, right? Um, or they will blend it. Yes, of course. Yeah, the blending is quite normal, especially when you're making the stews like the marag and things like that. So, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So what what you could do is um, depending on how you like it, try and see which way you know, suits you really. Like I said, I've tasted this before, but I've never actually made it because it looks so complicated with all the ingredients. But actually, we're doing this in only a few minutes and you've got all the ingredients laid out, which is quite yes. a lot. And I see quite a bit of spice over there yes. as well. Yes, we'll be using different spices. So we'll be putting in there some ginger, some cinnamon, some paprika and some cumin as well as salt and, and pepper in there as well. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up the um, parsley and the coriander. This is also a very important part of the soup. You can also um, blend this in as well. So, um, so blend it all before? You can do, yep. Okay. You can actually blend it in with the garlic. Right. And um, it kind of creates like this garlicky okay. paste. Sure. Which is really tasty as well. But right now we're going to chop it, which is fine. It doesn't okay. matter which because way. Because you're going to cook it and it's going to simmer anyway, exactly, right? Exactly, okay. yes. So just a handful of this. So how do you normally have it in your household? Is it a main meal or is it a side meal or a starter? Um, I would say it's too fulfilling to be just a starter. Okay. Um, as it's Which full is of good. things. However, in Moroccan households, they tend to have quite a lot of food. So for them, it's not a big issue. But for me, I would find it quite fulfilling. I would have it as an As a main meal. meal. Okay. Um, traditionally, though, it is um, made during Ramadan. All right. Um, and so we do have it a lot during Ramadan, but also throughout the, you know, now we're coming through the winter. Of course, the yeah. Soups are really good now this time of year if you're coming down with a cold or a flu. I was just going to say, because the ingredients are great. Exactly, yes. And it fills you up, so you're getting the right, you know, nutrition that definitely, you need if definitely. you can't have a full meal. Yeah, because normally when I have soup, again, it's just a starter and it's never filling. So it's nice to have something exactly. which is healthy and a soup, simple, easy, quick to prepare. Might take a bit of time just to simmer, but then you've done all the main work and you can do something else exactly, while yeah. that just cooks. Exactly, yep. Yeah. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some of the uh, seasoning in there. So I'm going to put um, a teaspoon of the pepper. That's quite a lot. It is, but it's, it's actually quite good to have pepper in this. Mm -hmm. um, it really does complement the soup. Um, if you find it too much, just reduce it. Okay. It's not essential. Right. Um, I would also do the same with the salt. Yeah, because obviously there's a lot of ingredients yep. that has the natural salt and flavours in there. Exactly, yep. Okay, so I'm going to put about a teaspoon of the uh, ground cinnamon. That smells really nice. It is. It just gives it that additional kind of um, kick into the, the soup. Right. I think that should be enough. I never really thought of cinnamon in a soup. Yep. We do mix a lot of things in our um, cuisine, sweet and savoury, in a lot of mm -hmm. our foods, but they do complement. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's why it makes such yeah. a exquisite taste. Now I'm going to put some um, ground cumin as well, similar uh, mm -hmm. teaspoon. It's more like um, like a curry sort of mixture when it comes to the spices, right? Even though you're using it in soup. Yes, yes, you're right. And um, I guess Especially when... Especially with those spices that you've just mentioned. Yeah. And paprika. And paprika, yep. Yeah. Okay. Do you find that it could be a bit spicy or paprika's not? It's just more flavouring. This is mild, so it's okay. not... Okay, yeah. If you I get was going to say, you spicy. can get the hot ones because some, you know, med... Middle Eastern dishes can be a bit spicy now. I, I noticed that a little bit more that there's a kick to it. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. no, you're right. No, a lot of our food don't, don't have a lot of spice. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time we use a lot of um, pepper. Wow, I can just smell the 
aroma yeah. and the flavors are really coming out just by you putting all that in there. Yes, and now it's the ginger fantastic. is going to also bring it out. That is amazing. This is even just before even properly cooking, so imagine. Yep. Wow. Okay. That's the ginger in there. Okay. And the final. Done the cumin. Okay, we've done that already, haven't we? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's great. So I'm also going to put um, about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to mix that up. Do you add the garlic? Yes, so I, add the, I had added the garlic with the oh, onions okay, right. at the, t the same time. Right. Um, also, what I'm going to use um, is some water. We need to put some water in there before we put it on the simmer. And that is just uh, about two cups, I would say, or? Yeah, I would say this is probably about a cup and a half. Okay. I love the fact that we don't need that many utensils and pots yep. and different, you know, areas of cooking because you want it simple and the fact that you just put it all in one pot. Yeah. It's amazing, even with all these ingredients. It does. It, it simplifies it and makes Very it Very simplified. Easier. So um, I'm also going to put... So, about, you know, when you're using these ingredients generally, yep. um, do you pre-boil them or you would put it... So um, with the uh, lentils, I would soak them the night okay. before. Right. So these would be soaked the night before, and then I would So you won't. OK, so they all cook in there. Yes, right. that's correct, yeah. Okay. Otherwise, um, it does take quite long, right. uh, which is fine. If, if you haven't and you've forgotten, it's yeah. OK. It just means you need it's to keep a it a longer. lot longer. OK. So I would use about a tablespoon and a half And of what the kind lentils. of lentils are those? Because we do have different types of lentils. Yes, so these are just um, the normal green The lentils. normal green lentils. Yes, okay. that's correct. Now, the chickpeas and the vermicelli, we don't need to add that. Um, that is until later on you can add that. Because they cook really quickly, it, right? Exactly, yes. yes. Um, but what we do need to put is, uh, if you say this is about 200 grams, so about half of this, okay. of the tomato puree, would need to go in there. Right. Wow, it smells so fantastic. I mean, I'm getting all this aroma, and I'm quite lucky to be in the studio with you to really have <laughs> this sort of experience. Yeah. It's nice, I guess, to kind of... So please try trust me, everyone. It <laughs> smells absolutely wonderful. Right. It's very strong flavours, to be fair. Yeah. So. so what you might find is that you might just need to add a bit more... Um, water. Water. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to do that now. Right. Well, soup will actually soak up... Um, the, all the ingredients will soak up all the water. Yeah. So you will maybe even in between that, you'd have to check and add some more water while it simmers? Yes, that's correct, yes. Okay. So this one will be on the simmer, so you can leave it on a very low heat. So on average, how long do you think this will take to cook? <laughs> so this is a vegetarian one. So you, Oh, yes, if you, of course, you can add meat to it. Yes, so uh, traditionally we, have, we can add lamb into it, but that's optional. So would you cook the lamb first or again put it no, straight in? No, I would put that in whilst I was put with the onions and the, the okay. garlic. And obviously lamb needs a bit of time to kind of So um, you do that simmer. first and then the rest. Exactly. So with everything that's in mm -hmm. there now, it's it's perfect. All it needs to be now is covered. And then... Um, so three quarters of the way, you would add the rest of the ingredients? Exactly, yes. Okay. So after about, I would say, about 35 to 40 minutes, 40 minutes. Um, have a look at it. And is it, it on medium, high, cook? Um, I would put it on low. Low oh, to so medium. it's really going to take its time. Exactly, okay, yeah, low to nice. medium. After about 35 to 40 minutes, stir it, have a check. Check the meat. If you're using, if you're using course, meat, yeah. um, you know, poke it to have a look yeah, to see if yeah. it's cooked. Mm -hmm. You may need to add a little bit of more, more water just because the, um, the tomato puree thickens yes, the soup. Of course. Um, so you might need to, you just need to assess it and have a look at yourself. And once it's in there, you can just leave it and forget about it. I know sometimes people add sort of like corn flour, you know, if it's too watery, if it's too thick, yeah. just to sort of, you know, play around with the consistency. It's good you said that because um, another way of doing it uh, to, to thicken the kind of the soup would be to use, we would typically use um, some flour. Okay, okay. So um, what kind of flour is that? So this is, at the moment, this is self-raising flour, but it doesn't matter. You can use plain. Any flour, it, okay. It, it doesn't matter. It's just to kind of thicken it up. Because in um, my sort of experience my soups are really really watery I think I add too much water yeah. so then sometimes this is really good substitute but also it gives a different flavor to it right exactly yeah so um, I'm just gonna show you so I've just put kind of half a tablespoon yeah in you there. really don't need much so please no. be careful when you're going to be adding this because you literally only need like half a teaspoon or a teaspoon exactly. in order for it to really thicken because it will go really thick otherwise as well yes and so once you've done that you just kind of need to 
keep on stirring mm -hmm. until all of the, the flour dissolves into the water. Okay, I, I, that's the other thing I never did was um, sort of put water in there first. I would just throw it in. So it's yeah. probably better to have it dissolved in water first and then throw it in because then you can see how thick it is. Exactly. Okay, yeah. that's a good tip. So um, what you'll see is that it will just be like this. Okay. You know, um, right. and obviously you just try and get out any of the, the, the bubbles lumps. and the lumps yeah. in there. Mm -hmm. um, but either way, if don't fuss about it too much, it's not a big deal. It will dissolve in the soup anyway. Right. Um, but what I would say is if you are going to do this, if you feel you need it, you need to monitor the soup. So um, okay. you need to make sure you're stirring it because what may happen is the flour may burn okay. and then the soup might get ru ruined. So you of don't want to do that. You want to try and avoid that. Okay. So this is just an option. If you want to thicken it up, you can use that. If not, and everything is fine, you can just put it away. Okay. And, and well, just we don't have time to cook this now for 40 minutes. <laughs> yes. So um, we have prepared one for you. Oh, so excellent. Just... So I will actually get a chance to taste this for real. Yes, one Here's one we made earlier. Exactly. <laughs> so let's just go. Right. Excellent. The smell and the look and the texture, unbelievable. Wow. So um, it's exactly that's the beautiful. same ingredients. The only thing is I've put meat in this. Mm -hmm. So that's optional. Of course. Um, I choose to put meat in here just because I feel it gives it that extra yeah. kind of uh, taste, you know, the... And it's more filling as well. It becomes more of a main meal. Exactly. Okay. It gives it that stock uh, taste okay. in the soup. But obviously, if you're, a, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian... Yeah, you can just leave it plain without. You can without. leave it out. Exactly. And what kind of meat? I mean, would you do the lamb or...? You can use lamb or you can use beef. Okay. Um, you what can't... have you got here? So I have here lamb. Okay. Because it also cooks a little bit quicker, right? It, exactly, it's yes. Faster. But if you've got time, I mean, I know um, in Morocco they use a pressure cooker. Mm -hmm. so, so it can make it, it okay. cooks a lot quicker. If you don't have one of those, just be prepared to kind of wait. Oh, wow, that looks absolutely delicious. I am so lucky today to be able to taste this. <laughs> See how it goes. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Mm. That is divine. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. I actually had the one without the meat, but the meat really does make a difference. You can taste the, the stock. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Is the salt and the flavors okay? Like. Absolutely delicious. That's great. Well, I'm going to finish this quickly <laughs> so I can finish the soup quickly. <laughs> Thank you again, Senna. No, you're welcome. You've given us lots of tips, lots of ideas. And again, it's a healthy, delicious meal that we can have, which is going to actually fill us up for longer. Yeah. And it's really, really quick and easy, which I didn't even think because I'm looking at all these ingredients. I'm like, how am I going to yeah. even start with this? Thank you so much for today. You're welcome. I hope you enjoyed watching. Inshallah, we'll be back with more recipes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Over to you, Sahra and Ali.